Hi everyone, welcome back to another quarter here at Rasmussen College. Lab skills is what you're getting ready to start, and it's actually the fun class that I like to say. Not that the other ones aren't. This one is just a very hands-on class. What I mean by that is that each week in each module, we'll talk about a different section of a lab. And what we'll do in lab class on Thursday is we'll actually perform the labs that go along with that section that we learned about. So week one is really dealing with kind of the fundamentals of a lab, kind of getting your feet dirty, uh, and your feet wet, hearing about lab things, okay? So chapter one and chapter two are for this week. Chapter one, again, dealing really with the fundamentals. Chapter two is going to be dealing with um, some of the testings that have to be done in order to run a lab. So let's start with chapter one. Chapter one is really dealing with the kind of understanding of a lab. Before you can really start working in your lab, you need to know why lab tests are ordered. You need to know where patients can have laboratory tests drawn and who runs the labs that they can go to. You also need to understand some of the basic terminology of a lab and the, what the lab uses. So that's where we're going to start with Chapter 1. Um, so why are tests ordered? So there are three basic main reasons that patients will have laboratory tests ordered for them. First reason being is we want to screen our patients for possible disorders and diseases. Second reason, we want to be able to establish a diagnosis for them. Patients want answers and we want to get them to them. So blood testing and laboratory testing will actually help with that. Third reason is that we want to be able to monitor their, their treatment plans that we set up. So our diabetic patients and some of our other patients with lifelong diseases will come in every few months to have blood work done to make sure that they're staying on track with where they need to be. All right, so we know why. Let's talk about where. There, there are three main places that patients will have labs drawn as well. The first and the biggest is always going to be a reference or a referral lab. So what that is, is it's, like I said, it's the largest facility, and it has some of the most specialized and high-tech equipment that patients' lab tests will be drawn through. Who runs that kind of a lab? Great question. Um, pathologists are usually the, the people who actually run the lab, and they are people who have doctoral degrees, and they really focus on the diagnosing um, and treatment of diseases. Then you have your clinical lab scientists or medical technologists. These are people with bachelor's degrees who really focus on the the usage and how lab tests are run. And finally, the last people who work in reference labs are medical technologists and technicians. And they're really the people with associate's degrees who will collect your samples. Then we have hospital labs. They're run very similarly to that of a reference laboratory. The only difference is, is that they also take not only the inpatient people who are in the hospital, but the outpatient samples. Um, from smaller offices that can't have the technology or they don't, or they can't afford the machines to run the high-tech stuff. Then the last place that patients can have their blood drawn are, rec or they are ambulatory care centers or physician office laboratories. These are generally what you'll see when you go to the doctor office. Okay, you've got either the doctor or the medical assistant who will do some of the blood drawing. And we generally do a lot of what are called point of care testing. These are smaller tests that are easier to perform, which is what you'll perform in labs this week um, and subsequent weeks. And they give results very quickly so we can give patients the answers right away. That doesn't mean that we don't draw blood because we will, but we'll send it out to a hospital lab generally to have them run that. All right. So we know where, we know why, we know who runs it. Let's, um, let's talk about some lingo that you'll hear. So the first thing that you'll always hear in a, in a referral in a uh, laboratory is a requisition form. This is really an order form for what blood work needs to be drawn. It generally can be computerized or handwritten, and it will come in, and what we do is we transcribe that, and it will print out labels with the color tube that we need to draw for patients. Second thing that you'll hear is a laboratory report, and this essentially is just the result form of what blood tests were ordered. Again, they can be computerized or handwritten, 
and then they get sent to the provider to review and then what he can do is forward those on to the patient. The last thing that you'll hear when dealing with a laboratory is what we call the measurement. Now, if you remember, we did talk about this in a previous class, Clinical Skills 1. Uh, we talked about how labs and other facilities use what we call the international metric system, which really just focuses on the measurements of weight, height, and length. I'm sorry, weight, volume, and length. And that's going to deal with things such as meters, liters, and grams. And then there's subsequent subcategories of like milliliter, milligram, microgram, things like that. All right, chapter two. Uh, so that's all I'm going to talk about in chapter one. Again, so your responsibility to read the entire chapter. Chapter two, I don't want to really go through the whole chapter because we will talk about this in a later lab. But what I want to focus on is kind of reminding you guys about quality assurance and quality control. Now remember that quality assurance is really um, the, the process that we go through to help make sure that our machines are reliable and efficient and they give good patient answers. Remember that quality assurance comes in three phases. It comes in a pre-analytical, an analytical, and a post-analytical. So before, during, and after. Now during that analytical phase is where we'll find quality control. And quality control is where you get analytes which are run alongside the same as the patient sample, and they're generally a positive or negative, or a normal range, or an abnormal range. And what we do is we test these alongside patient samples to test the reliability, the accuracy, and the precision of the test system itself. All right, guys, again, that's all I really want to talk about in the video for you guys. Please make sure you still read chapters one and two on your own. Our lab classes are going to be held on Thursdays this time instead of Wednesdays. Um, if you were a morning student, your time is going to change just a little bit. We're going to go from 11.15 to 2.45. Night students, it's the same time, that 5.45 to 9.20. Please make sure that you wear your scrubs to every class because we will be dealing with blood and urine and other bodily functions on a daily basis in class. Um, Second thing, you do not need to print any of the materials for class. I will always have those available for you. But what you may want to take a look at is the project um, discussing, we're going to be discussing the project for this week. So you may want to take a look at that before you come to class. Don't forget that your initial discussion post for your uh, discussion topic this week is going to be due on Wednesday, and your two responses are going to be due on Saturday. All right, I will see you guys on Thursday. I hope you all had a wonderful break. Bye.